Hi again, everyone, and welcome to week eight of Accessible Learning with Technology. I hope that you all had a relaxing and enjoyable reading week during week seven, and that uh, you were all able to tackle assignment two, your draft ebook chapters. This week, we are going to turn our attention to assessing uh, our uh, resources for accessibility to make sure that we're meeting everyone's needs and to actually creating some checklists ourselves. If you take a look at the resources that I have posted for this week, I have two uh, resource pages posted for you. The first one is all about accessibility testing. And uh, we start off by taking a look at using accessibility checklists, because that's going to be one of our activities in class. So I have a few examples here posted for you, an accessibility checklist that I use when I'm giving feedback on assignments like your draft ebook chapter. Um, and also some uh, checklists that have been developed by the Quality Matters Consortium uh, and uh, one that's been posted by Harvard University. They have a nice digital accessibility uh, checklist here that's available in Excel or Google Sheets format for doing an analysis of web-based resources and reporting on accessibility issues that you discover. I've also got a lot of resources here for you, some video tutorials on how to automatically check for accessibility issues in some of the tools that we use all the time, like uh, Google Docs, Google Slides, Google Classrooms, things like that. Uh, using Microsoft Office applications, how to do the automated accessibility check within those applications, uh, as well as for working in the Moodle LMS or the Canvas LMS, which we use here for, uh, for this course. Uh, I've got some curated lists of uh, automated accessibility checkers here for you that have been uh, curated by Harvard University, the University of Waterloo, and of course by the World Wide Web Consortium. And one of my favorite tools for checking color contrast, as well as uh, an overview here of why you need to be careful when you're using automated checkers, why they're not the be all and end all of giving you um, that real deep insight into everything that you need to make sure of when you are checking the accessibility of your resources. Uh, our next resources page that I have for you is uh, an overview of some digital tools that you can use to support accessibility for your classes and for your students. Again, I've posted a link to one of the webinars that I gave with uh, Sandra Jack Mellick, who is uh, one of Canada's foremost academics and researchers in terms of uh, language-based learning disabilities. It's a dyslexia-focused webinar, but as I uh, mentioned back in week six, a lot of these tools and resources are useful for students with a wide range of accessibility issues. And again, it's not a comprehensive list of everything that's out there for you. We're going to get a more deep look at some of those tools as each of your groups presents your major group presentations on um, tools to support accessibility and to overcome barriers to accessibility during weeks not, uh, seven to not, or sorry weeks nine to eleven of the course. If you take a look next at what I have planned for our uh, Zoom class, I don't have too much in the way of lecture notes in my slide deck. I'm gonna do some how-to demonstrations for you, and I have a couple of breakout activities planned. In one of those, you and your group members are going to use some automated accessibility checkers to uh, do your own audits on some sample websites. The second breakout activity, you and your group members are going to develop your own accessibility audit checklist that you could use when um, giving peer feedback on assignments like that draft ebook chapter that you submitted at the end of reading week, or that you could use when creating your own written or web-based resources like perhaps uh, that group presentation resources site that you need to create for your major presentations for assignment four. Uh, 